If you divide 8 billion people and let's say we have like 450 Bitcoin a day, this means you need six Satoshis a day with like more Bitcoin than the average guy. The concept of retirement is stupid because we want to do what we love and if we, when we do what we love, we don't retire. 2044, it's the first year we have like a block subsidy with less than 0 0.1 Bitcoin. It's 0 0.097656625 Bitcoin. So if you buy today for 7,000 Euro, you wait 20 years, then you have a full block subsidy. And this is so awesome because in 20 years the hash rate will be way higher so there will be miners all around the world mining for this 0.1 bitcoin and you today can with 7000 euros buy one block subsidy in 20 years everything is yeah more abundant bitcoin is scarce the price has to go up forever we really have to go back to the source of the problems and not just fix like symptoms the half-life of fiat yeah. is like 35 years and the half-life of bitcoin is forever at some point your bitcoin stack is growing faster then you as an individual can earn revenue so she was the engineer of the store of value problem. Hi Mark, how are you doing? Everything fine? Hey Robin, I'm super good. I am yeah, glad to be in your podcast. I love it. Yeah, really looking forward. I'm doing so many podcasts and uh, it's my only my third podcast that is in no my yeah, my fourth podcast is in person, so like mm -hmm. I'm glad that you have you on. Yeah. And uh, a background story also for maybe interesting for my viewers. Mark was the first one that ever interviewed me on his channel. So uh, in, it is in German, otherwise I would have linked it, but I might still link it so that people can check it out. So thank you first of all, like to for you trusting in me that I have something to say. <laughs> it's like really cool uh, when I had like almost no followers and had like nothing uh, to offer. But yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, how is Prague uh, so far? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it's like the biggest Bitcoin conference in the world. And I pretty fast realized this, that you're like uh, really into Bitcoin because you can almost smell this. I mean, if you just talk <laughs> like two minutes with a guy, then you see, okay, is he like deep into Bitcoin or is he like just like blah, blah. But I pretty fast realized that you're pretty deep into Bitcoin and therefore Amazing. I'm super glad for your success and it's well deserved. Uh, thank you, Mark. Yeah. And today I wanted to talk about with you, like you, you're a pretty broad guy, like you can cover so many topics, uh, but we talked about the upcoming bull run. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something coming in 2024, 2025. At least I would be really disappointed if nothing comes at all. Um, what do you expect and what do you say, like how much should we at least stack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before we start, so just small introduction so I'm Mark and I also have like a German uh, YouTube channel so we have we are actually one of the most viewed Bitcoin only channels mm. of the world even though we are in German it's wow. super imp impressive because block trainers like the most watched and he's also in German and then like there are some other channels but then like we are pretty much on somewhere on the top this is super interesting because the German yeah, society or the German crowd is really, really strong. And yeah, there's always like this discussions of how many Bitcoin do you need? <laughs> and I'm also like doing lots of content and there are like different approaches to this. So some say, OK, one Bitcoin. So this is like the British hodl aspect. So get at least one Bitcoin. Then there is like 0 0.1 Bitcoin because people say, OK, the price appreciation will be so Great that even 0 0.1 Bitcoin will be like super great in the future. But there is like, yeah, some pretty nice maths going on. So if you look like, okay, we have like 8 billion people in the world. And if you divide like 8 billion people through 21 billion Bitcoin, then you get like 0 0.0265 Bitcoin. Yeah. So this is like the average ratio you need to be at least like to have at least more Bitcoin than the, the average Joe, than the average guy. Than the average guy right now. Yeah. What, what does the average guy like? Is it like 8,000 or what is the average net worth right now? I'm not so sure. Uh, I'm not so sure. I mean, it depends a lot. It depends yeah. a lot. It depends a lot. But let's say we are in a Bitcoin standard and you have 0 0.0265 Bitcoin, then you have more than the average Joe. Mm. And now, be, now comes the crazy thing. If you divide like 8 billion people and you see and, and it, let's say we have like 450 Bitcoin a day. This means you need six Satoshis a day to have like more Bitcoin than the average guy. So you just need six Satoshis a day. So if you buy like a coffee, then you have like a whole ratio for like one year of Bitcoin and you have more like 
the average guy can buy Bitcoin. Would you have to accumulate six Satoshis a day? Well, wait, yeah, uh, repeat yeah, it again. Yes, yes, you have, uh, to, you have to buy six Satoshis a day and just buy this like over a, a, a long time. And then you have like more than the average uh, person can buy because at the, at, at, yeah, right now we produce like 550 Bitcoin a day and we have like 8 billion people. And if you just uh, sum up the, the numbers, then you get to the uh, six Satoshis. Amazing. Yeah. So well, lots of people think you need like a huge number. You need like 10 Bitcoin. You need like, yeah, 20 Bitcoin. And also like it depends like how is the price appreciation going on. So if you let, let's say in 10 years we are like, let's say we are like at a million. Okay, then probably one Bitcoin is pretty much, let's say, if we have like 10 million in purchasing power. I mean, this would be in real value, this would be like 20 million price or 50 million price. I'm not sure. But let's say in 10 years we have like one million in today's purchasing power then one Bitcoin can be pretty awesome. And even like super, super small allocations in the case we get to a Bitcoin standard, like 0 0.0265 Bitcoin can be like, probably not to have be like the richest man in the world, but to at least have something pretty good. And it also depends yeah. on what your time frame is, because yes. if like, uh, if you want to retire on Bitcoin in the next five years, mm -hmm. You probably need a lot more than 0 0.1 mm -hmm. Bitcoin, yes. uh, but if you're like as me, like I'm 25 mm -hmm. years old, I'm pretty stoked with my uh, Bitcoin stack because I can still stack on a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in the future, like uh, I, I don't even want to retire because I still I just want to work and, and do something for society. But even if I want to retire, I have a pretty long uh, go where I can go. It's really interesting. What else do you expect for like the the 2024 and 2025? hopefully bull run. Yeah, well, wait, wait, before we come to the bull run, yeah. there is there is a good way to like think about this because it's always like about time and about like what's your living cost. So there's like people, okay, when can you retire? I mean, it's a stupid idea because we don't want to retire. Actually, the, the concept of retirement is stupid because we want to do what we love. And if we, when we do what we love, we don't retire. And also we always get more money than we need for our living consume. So the retirement concept is, in my opinion, bullshit. But mm. let's say you have like a time horizon. Let's say you are 20, 30 or 40. It doesn't matter. But to think about, OK, maybe it's a cool achievement to at least get a whole plug subsidy. So the block subsidy is getting smaller, 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 smaller. And here comes the time frame. And so let's say you want to have like, for example, there is like, let me check the numbers. So I don't, I don't say anything wrong. So let's say, let's say you have like 20 years. So in 2044, the block subsidy of like every, every 10 minutes, what the miners are like mining is like 0 0.0976 five six two five bitcoin mm. it's almost 0 0.1 bitcoin so if you buy now 0 0.1 bitcoin and right now 0 0.1 bitcoin is like seven thousand us dollars and if you wait 20 years then you have like a whole block subsidy so your goal uh. should be to get at least one block subsidy and then have the time frame to at least wait as long as yeah to be at the place where this block subsidy is like the reality and then you have like a good measurement of yeah maybe that's a that's a nice goal and depending on how long you can wait uh, lesser and lesser bitcoin are yeah how, how did you come up with the block subsidy like where is this uh, coming from yeah the block subsidy i mean there's like bitcoin is open source and bitcoin is like a, a transparent ledger and i mean every four years the block sub subsidy halves so yeah. we have like 50 bitcoin 25 bitcoin 12.5 bitcoin then six point uh, and so and so on and in 2044 it's the first year we have like a block subsidy with less than 0 0.1 Bitcoin. It's 0 0.09765625 Bitcoin. And so if you buy today for 7,000 Euro, you wait 20 years, then you have a full block subsidy. And this is so um, awesome because in 20 years, the hash rate will be way higher. So there will be miners all around the world mining for this almost this 0 0.1 Bitcoin. And you today can with 7,000 euros buy one block subsidy in 20 years and this is so awesome because in 20 years i mean yeah it's not a fair comparison because miners also get like transaction yeah, costs. yeah but it, 
to, to think how mind-blowing this is and you can even top this if you think like I'm buying today like a coffee and if you go like 80 years in the future the whole black subsidy will be the satoshis you pay today for a coffee and this is like <laughs> ultimate mind-blowing and then you really start to realize bitcoin scarcity is not a joke bitcoin scarcity is like the most brutal thing in the world and the mathematical numbers are so mind-blowing and this is like just yeah and, and pure mind blow and it's fascinating for me <laughs> because uh, today i was at the water booth where i can buy water mm -hmm. and like she called she said like credit card or satoshis and i said like wait i don't want to spend my satoshis like it, it feels so so many so much worse to spend satoshis than just spending euros mm -hmm. even though it's the same because i can also like mm -hmm. uh, spend the satoshis and instantly buy back the satoshis uh, spend and replace it would not make a really a huge difference despite that then i have tax implications and all that stuff uh, but uh, that it does something with your brain uh, mm -hmm. living on a bitcoin stand, it do, does something with your brain oh there are only 21 million mm -hmm. uh, if i give this thousand satoshis away i have to work to get it back mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt if you dump so if you're just like trashing your bitcoin and <laughs> let's say here is your bitcoin and give me the satoshi then it does not hurt but if you're really like realizing okay today i'm like for example today i'm buying like a car for 0 0.1 bitcoin but on the other side, I could just wait 20 years and I have a, block, I have a full block subsidy. I mean, then really comes the pain in. And mm. this is like this, this, the thing, because you always have those opportunity costs. You always have the choice between, okay, I buy a car now, or in 20 years, I have a whole block subsidy. I can buy a cappuccino now, or in 80 years, I have a full block subsidy. And this is like, <laughs> this, and this is like a crazy <laughs> comparison, which lets you realize how scarce and how awesome Bitcoin is. And I mean, it's like Michael Saylor says in 2034, 99% of all Bitcoin are mined. And then over a period of 100 years or not even yeah, 100 years, it's like 1% new supply and that's it. And Bitcoin gets scarcer, scarcer, scarcer. Everything else gets like, uh, yeah, spread more, more spread around. It's easier to produce gold. It's easier pro to, to produce silver. It's easier to produce houses. Everything is yeah more abundant. Bitcoin is scarce. The price has to go up forever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it a lot. Um, when we now put that even like a little bit more in the future, and I always like to ask the question. It's kind of like an, an, a routine question that I almost everyone asked, uh, and even including Michael Saylor today. Um, we have Bitcoin, uh, we kind of could imagine living on a Bitcoin standard, Bitcoin could become actually money. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of debates on like, could it actually be money or is it just a store of value? But besides that, uh, we have a sound system where we can save our financial energy. When we keep that in mind, um, does, do you think that changes something in society? So if we have like sound money, if this changes something in society. I, as I see it always like um, if you run on sand, you can still run. It's OK. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit muddy. Uh, mm -hmm. The sand drags you down, mm -hmm. but you can still run. Mm -hmm. But if you're on a solid street, uh, you can run way faster. Sure. It, it, it makes way more fun to, to run mm -hmm. on a solid street and then you're faster and you can do mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, and there's no, no force that drags you down. But right, right now, we are one of the few people that have Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even worse. We're not running a society on sand. We are, run, uh, we are like building a society on dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, I imagine we're running on dog shit. <laughs> and people are wondering why are there problems? Why is it not working? Because that's the thing most people forget. We really have to go back to the source of the problems and not just fix like symptoms. And I mean, it's like just we have like this, this dam and it's cracking everywhere. And then people are, okay, here a little money, they put their money, we put everything full of money, but it doesn't work. It's like, yeah, it's like you're, you're like super ill, the body is super ill, and you just give it, yeah, here's your medication, and here's some trucks, and more trucks, more trucks, and we need more and more trucks. We are addicted, we are addicted to money, and then we are wondering, okay, we're building a society on dog shit, because fiat is actually, I mean, dog shit is probably a bit, a good comparison <laughs> because I mean it kind of works from the payment aspect and everything else but it's like the the invisible side of the fiat money is like so absurd because your like purchasing power really gets like tried out of you so it's like really dying slow 
It's like not like dying fast. It's not like okay, I take the pistol and you you're dead. It's like I'm killing people slowly, and that's actually happening right now. I mean, probably not killing, but at least like hurting pretty much the the people. And people start to realize, oh, life gets harder, and I need two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. But they don't realize, okay, maybe the 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 foundation of our society is just broken. We have broken money, and if we have broken money, how can we build a prosperous society? It, it's it's fascinating for me because if if you have inflation and 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 the thing is inflating, it actually does not really matter if it's like two, twelve, twenty, because it is inflating and you are losing purchasing power. Every, and compare that to Bitcoin, where it's not inflating. I mean, technically there are new Bitcoin coming in, but we have a limit, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's uh, disinflationary. Uh, do you use the right term? And it, that's fascinating for me. I mean, even if you have 2%, then your purchasing power is dried out in 35 years. So the half-life of fiat yeah. is like 35 years. If you have like 10... In a, in a good case. Yeah, in a good case. <laughs> if we have like 10% and also there's like, there's like inflation and there's like real inflation and there's like uh, asset price inflation. So if we have like the, the real inflation, let's say 10%, 15%, I mean, then your purchasing power is gone in... 15 years and 10 years, so the half-life is more like 10 or 15 years and the half-life of Bitcoin is forever. What would yeah. you say is the most accurate way to actually measure inflation? I, I really like mm. to use like an S&P 500 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is not, I mean, you can do it, but I mean, if you measure something in, in uh, US dollar terms, it's always like distorted. So mm. you can kind of, you can, it's like, okay, you can try it, you can try it, but you can never really measure it. If you really want to measure inflation, then you have to be on a Bitcoin standard and then you can measure how is the Bitcoin inflation. I mean, it's easy to measure because you know how's the inflation in 100 years, how's the inflation in 50 years, how's the inflation in 20 years. But if you try to measure what's the inflation with fiat money, I mean, there is no chance. I mean, the most accurate way would be to just measure like the, the M2 money supply. So if you just uh, look like, okay, today we have like, let's say 20 billion dollar notes i mean not dollar notes but let's say we have like 20 billion let's uh, money supply and tomorrow we have like 30 billion money supply then the inflation would be the difference between the 20 and the 30 billion in the money supply so this is probably the most accurate way but what they do like with consumer price in index and then they just um, uh, take out the coffee because coffee is now getting too expensive so we take out the coffee so the numbers look better i mean that's just like uh, gaslighting people uh, yeah. absolutely and you also uh, you you mentioned it before a little bit uh, but i really want to get a little bit deeper in that because you took a hotel this was already uh, mm -hmm. existing it's like that you did not found a new bitcoin hotel you, you took an existing business model uh, similar to MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor, but uh, on a different scale, of course. Uh, you took a hotel and put it on a Bitcoin standard. Uh, and I asked you that before, but I never covered that on the podcast, and I think it would be really interesting. What was the main thing that happened? I mean, uh, today uh, I, I loved what Michael Saylor said on the podcast, and it is like two episodes back uh, at this point. Uh, uh, he said like, what what changes in society when we have bitcoin what changes for for companies they like they are getting immortal because they have a sound monetary uh, base where they can actually uh, secure the finances and they don't have to struggle they can really build on that and he thinks that companies then will not live uh, an average life uh, expectancy of a company right now is 10 years uh, if they get over that uh, startup phase uh, and uh, what what happens when companies all of a sudden get 100 years, 1000 years because they have a sound money, uh, a really good mm -hmm. foundation. What what happened in, in, in Bitcoin Hotel Princess Blocking? I mean, that's an interesting question. I don't think there will be companies in future, which I mean, there will always be companies, 100 year companies, 500 year companies. We even have this, those, those today, those 100 yeah. years companies. They will be more but there will not be a lot because at a company you still have like a CEO who can fuck up the company. Your, your business model can run out of, yeah, can be like poor or, or not working anymore. So there won't be like a lot of companies which exist like more than 100 years, but at least you have the possibility to thrive better because it's like the comparison with like fasting. It's like realizing, oh, I don't have to eat every day because I have so much things stored in my body, like 
in fat cells and everything. So I don't have to eat every day. I can like go for 30 days. I can go for 40 days without eating. And it's like the same with Bitcoin when you realize, okay, I have so much Bitcoin stacked up. So even though I don't work today and it's not like for a company, not just for a company, it's like for an individual, it's for a country, it's for a company. If you have like a Bitcoin stack and the Bitcoin stack gets more and more valuable over the time, and even if it's just like one Bitcoin, two Bitcoin, 10, 10 Bitcoin, I mean, at some point your Bitcoin stack will grow faster than the company is building revenue. At some point, your Bitcoin stack is growing faster than you as an individual can earn yeah, revenue or can earn yeah, earnings. So this is like the, the, the game theory of Bitcoin that at some point, probably your portfolio makes more gains in one day then you make like uh, on a on a month when you when a, when you go working and then at some point you start to realize oh yeah now i can probably focus on what i really love i don't have to focus so much on what i have to do i have, don't have to do 10 jobs i mean that's like a it depends a lot on your living cost on your yeah how efficient is your company and everything but in theory if bitcoin goes up forever then at some point there will be like the flipping where your Bitcoin stack outperforms your company's yeah, revenue stream <laughs> or your individual <laughs> revenue stream or the revenue stream of a country. I mean, this is like pretty crazy to think about if a country, I mean, El Salvador has now 6,000 Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But imagine if we have like in 20 years and 30 years, if we have like a Bitcoin standard, I mean, the prices will be so high that we don't even have probably fiat anymore. I mean, 6,000 Bitcoin, I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and probably El Salvador will outcompete with other countries. And the same goes for companies. I mean, Michael Saylor has now 1% of the Bitcoin supply with MicroStrategy. Imagine in 20 years, a Bitcoin standard. I mean, that's so fucking much Bitcoin. I mean, even though if they don't work and don't work anymore, I mean, they will still outcompete other companies, even though they don't work anymore. Yeah, Bitcoin becomes a new hurdle rate. Yeah. Like uh, when you have an investment, I was a stock investor before, we, we talked about that and I really loved it. Like I loved picking stocks, but once I got to Bitcoin, I was like, there, there is nothing else. Like as Michael Saylor always said, like there is no second best. And it's like, uh, do I really trust that company? And even if they are doing what I project them to do, there's a CEO that can fuck up anytime. Mm. They're like you, you really have to sleep with that. And that's why the, all the stock people are like, you have to diversify. Like, of course, when you only bet on one company, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, it, especially if you really don't own the company and maybe you're the CEO, then it makes sense or you're the founder, then, then it's like one company. Uh, but uh, it, it's just an individual stock all in in Tesla as I also was. Uh, it's ridiculous at, 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 at this point now. Like uh, it's interesting yeah. to see. I mean, diversifying is a good idea when there the technology is not built yet. So right now we have like a chair. It makes no sense to diversify because we know the chair is working. <laughs> I'm not having like two or three chairs. I'm having like one chair. And it's like if you if we look like how technology develops. So we can take, for example, we can take lightning. So at first we had like fire, we have like candles and this was kind of okay, but it was not really perfect because mm. fire was careful and candles were also not optimal. And so we have like for lightning, we used like candles, we used fire. And at some point there was an engineer and he developed like the electrical light. And this was the solution for all the problems. And the, the, the candles and the, the fire was like, not actually designed for lightning it was like just we took something out of nature which kind of fitted in the probabilities of yeah having light but it was not like the perfect solution but mm -hmm. electrical light was the perfect solution because we i mean sure we need electricity but i mean it's way way better than candles and way way better than fire and nowadays everyone uses electrical light no one uses candles i mean some people still but they just use it like more for fun and not like for real use case like most people use electrical light and the same goes for example for information so if you want to transport information i mean we use like uh, we use like birds for example we used birds to transfer information or we used horses or we used letters or we used like yeah fire signs and this all kind of worked but also it was not perfect and at some point there was an engineer and he designed the internet and then we had like the perfect solution we can transfer information immediately 
always in an instant. And this, now everyone for trans, uh, transferring information uses the internet because this is just mm -hmm. the, the perfect solution for this problem. And people are problem solvers. And at some point there was like Satoshi and Satoshi was the engineer of the store of value problem. So we used other things to store our value because the right solution was not developed yet. So we used like stocks, we used real estate. I mean, it makes no sense to save your purchasing power in real estate because people use it to living. But it was like we took just something out of nature which kind of works, but which had not all probabilities of a good store of value. So we need like durability, scarcity. We need like, yeah, uh, it has to be transparent. It has to be 24-7 uh, available. It has to be transferable instant. And like all this, all this, yeah, all this probabilities. And then Satoshi came and he developed Bitcoin and Bitcoin was just the perfect solution for the store of value problem. So the light, the electrical light was the solution for like the lightning problem, the, the lighting problem. Then we had like the internet was the solution for the information problem. And Bitcoin is the solution for the store of value problem. Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With Code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistics. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order plus you support my channel. And now let's get back to the video. I love it a lot what you're saying. It's it's really cool, um, and and for me it's like uh, when you get into Bitcoin, it's like you're so excited about Bitcoin and, and, and you're doing so much stuff in Bitcoin, and I'm often like, why do not more people get it? Like it it it, it seems like we're in a in a bubble and, and everything is so great, and then you get out like, I oh, know I don't want Bitcoin. It's for rich people, and, and you get all this this weird stuff. Is there um, as you have also a lot of experience in in, in in speaking with with people and and orange peeling people and you have probably also a lot of experience in the hotel also when other people come that are not in bitcoin uh, and then see the the bitcoin hotel um what can bitcoiners do to like accelerate bitcoin adoption like what's the what, what would you say is like a, a, a good strategy a good uh, thing to do as a bitcoiner uh, to like not hinder uh, the, the the bitcoin adoption but accelerate the bitcoin mm -hmm. adoption i think bitcoin is like idea and ideas and ideas and, and the idea it's like the perfect idea in the perfect time and you can't stop an idea which like occurs at like the perfect time so you can do something we can do podcasts but also we could chill at the, at the beach because mm. the idea is so powerful i mean even though we are not doing anything right now it's like not that bitcoin needs us but we need bitcoin so of course, I mean, it's always interdependent. And if we, if everyone thinks like that, maybe then it won't work. But I really think even though if we don't do anything, then still the idea is so powerful that in five, 50 years, 100 years, I don't know how long it takes, but at some point Bitcoin will be like the solution and people will realize Bitcoin is the perfect solution for store of value. Bitcoin is our, yeah, the best form of money we have and Bitcoin is not just the first cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is the last type of money we have like as human humanity. So you can do something, but it's more like for your own yeah, benefit. So if you live like on a Bitcoin standard, then you will benefit. If you yeah, study Bitcoin, then you will benefit. If you are around with Bitcoin people, then you will benefit. If you do a lot of Bitcoin things, then you will benefit. So if you do something for Bitcoin, you will benefit. So it's your personal benefit. But if you don't do something for Bitcoin, then you won't benefit or the benefits will be like way, way less. But still the idea will like uh, find its way into mainstream. And the point of stopping is like over now. This was like 10 years ago or something like that or seven or six years ago. But nowadays the point of 
no return is like yeah, crossed. We are not crossed like the chasm. So this is like a concept, okay, so if we cross the chasm, then Bitcoin really gets into mainstream. That's not happening right now. Maybe in this cycle, maybe next cycle, the, the, the mainstream adoption, but the idea is like, yeah, just, just yeah, the game theory is just in play. Uh, I love it a lot. Uh, I question myself, like, you are now having the hotel. Uh, obviously, the, you're not alone in the hotel. You're not running your hotel alone. But w what drives you to, like, or all those uh, Bitcoin content things, and it's like like you have a really big YouTube channel, like you're doing a lot of videos. I, I see how much work you actually put into the videos, how much work you actually put in the title and the thumbnail, and everything is really um, um, great. And you put in a lot of work and love in, in the details. Uh, and as you said before, we could also just not do anything. Like Bitcoin does not need us. Um, what, what still drives you and maybe other Bitcoiners to like still do something for Bitcoin? Mm. I mean, it's just Bitcoin is what is super inspiring and it's like fulfilling me completely. And it's like everyone has like this inner calling. And for me, it's like Bitcoin because Bitcoin is really the place where I really th see like the possibility to really give humanity something back. I mean, I could also do music or I could do other things, but I think Bitcoin is the thing which has the biggest lever. So I could mm. do, for example, I could do yoga with the people or I could talk about yeah, eating healthy or something like that, but the lever is not there. I mean, there is some lever. I mean, if you talk about healthy living or healthy eating, I mean, there is some lever, but the biggest lever and the thing that really changes humanity is Bitcoin. And therefore, like, this is like, yeah, because I, I also did other things, but it was never so fulfilling because if we don't have sound money, then also we don't have sound food. If we don't have sound money, we don't have a, sound, a, a good school. If we don't have sound money, then we don't have like, uh, yeah, a good society. If we don't have sound money, then we don't have sound or good uh, relationships. So I could do things about relationships. I could do things about health. I could do things about yeah, living together better or something like that. But it makes no sense if there is no sound money. And so why not focus on the sound money thing first? And if this is fixed, then we can go back to living healthy and things like that. I mean, it's all, always important that we also have like other people who have, are in other rabbit holes. But for <laughs> me, like this makes like, it makes no sense to focus your time and your energy on something else. If this is like the solution for at least 50% of the problems we have for hum humanity right now. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, when you said uh, healthy food and I also know you, you're vegan, uh, uh, are you still? Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and it's interesting for me because uh, I talked with Dani about that in the podcast. Like Bitcoiners are putting too much their own values, putting them on Bitcoin, and then expecting that every Bitcoiner is like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you have to be kind of only eating meat, uh, otherwise you're not a Bitcoiner. And I'm like, N -n -n no, <laughs> like you can eat whatever you want. And then there's like, I think we even talked about that when you first interviewed me in in, in German, where like. We should agree on stuff. We should like we should focus on the commonalities uh, in, in the Bitcoin community. Do, do you think that the Bitcoin community sometimes, especially on Twitter, is too toxic and too uh, frightening, especially for normies? The big problem is we are not focusing on what unites us. We are foc focusing us on what's separating us, mm. and this is like every happening everywhere, not just in the Bitcoin space. In other spaces, it's way, way worse. So that's also like a strategy to, yeah, to govern people. I mean, if you don't, can yeah, if you don't have like good solutions, then just like let the people fight against each other so they don't fight against the government. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is like happening everywhere. And I mean, you know, we have so much in common. So we have all hairs. We are all human beings. We are all like yeah, we have all blood. We have all like our organs. There is like one million like things who are pretty similar and then we focus on the one thing so you eat beef and i eat like plants i eat like fruits or vegetables or whatever and another guy eats like meat and then we focus okay what separates us and it's like one point out of million points who separates us and we're focusing on this one point this is this makes no sense and this is like this this the monkey brain we are we are really like uh, yeah caught in our monkey brain so we lose the 
yeah, the, the connection to our inner self. And when we lose the connection to our inner self, we also lose the connection to our neighbors, to our friends, to our best friends, because in the end, it's all an illusion. There is no you and I. There is like one yeah, great, I don't know how to say, I mean, some people say like there is like one universe, we are all one. You can say whatever you want, but there is no separation. The separation is just in your, in your head. And this is what people don't realize. And then they focus on, this, on, the, on what separates us instead of reminding us, okay, what connects us. And this is also what's healing. If we realize, hey, we are connected. If your life is better, my life is better. If my life is better, your life is better. And if we use Bitcoin, both of our lives is better. Is, is that a thing that could actually happen and, and unite the global uh, sphere a little bit more when we have all the same money or the same way of storing money? Uh, I mean, even like we are now in Czech, uh, you're from Germany, I'm from Austria, uh, and we use different currencies, like Austria and Germany, the, the same currency, but in Czech we use a different currency, uh, even though we are so close to each other. Uh, and is, is that something that Bitcoin could actually unite us again? Yes, exactly. Or otherwise you could say fiat is separating us. I mean, <laughs> for example, for example, I mean, if you look like what type of countries are making war, I mean, there is always like religion type of wars, but if we look like there is like religion wars and there is currency wars. And mm. it makes no sense that Germany is attacking France because they have the same currency. <laughs> they are like in the same in the same currency room. It also makes no sense that Italy, Italy attacks Spain or Germany fights against yeah, Spain or something like that. But when we see like war happening, it's always okay. The US, the US dollar is attacking the euro. Or the euro is attacking the the ruble, or the ruble is attacking the Chinese, uh, the ruble is attacking the dollar. So it's always like those different currency rooms fighting against each other. And if you realize that, and also like in a war scenario, it's always about which type of currency is inflating the slowest. So you're buying weapons, you're fighting against each other. You have to inflate your currency, and the biggest room, the biggest currency room, can yeah has the big, biggest benefit of like the, the, money, the money monopole. And so the side wins, which has like the, yeah, sometimes the biggest uh, currency room and the side wins who inflates the money, the, yeah, the, actually the slowest. And then this is like the question, okay, in a Bitcoin standard, maybe it makes no sense that China attacks the US because they all have like the same currency room. and. Okay, there could be like some uh, religious type of fights, but I mean, also it's like super hard in a, in a Bitcoin standard to finance war because there is no money printer. And how do we finance wars without money printer? Do you, do you think that Bitcoin bring peace? brings peace? Uh, Bitcoin does not bring peace. Bitcoin is peace. Bitcoin is like the freedom technology. We waited like all the way. I once heard Max Kaiser and it's going a bit too far, but he has kind of a point in what he's saying. He's saying, uh, God brought us Jesus and it, this did not solve uh, peace in the world. This did not bring peace to the world. Now Satoshi brings us Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin nodes and this will bring us peace. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit too far. I know, I know, but there is some truth in it because yeah. this is like the freedom technology, which unites us and which does not separate us. It's like slay your heroes and we have transparent money with decentralized money. There is no governor, there is no Lagarde, there's no Jerome Powell. There is just like transparent rules. And if you want to play with the rules, then join Bitcoin. And if not, then have fun staying poor. It's also interesting yeah. how uh, people connect uh, Bitcoin and religion so much. Like I hear that so many times and I, I interviewed people like uh, the, the guy from the Bitcoin Bible. Uh, who mm -hmm. connects uh, Christianity with Bitcoin and, and, and says that all, st all that stuff. Um, do you also like uh, see it sometimes as a, is, is there a connection uh, or do you see like, ah, oh, it's money and the religion is, it doesn't make sense. People just put their value in, into that. I mean, yes and no. I mean, it depends like how you, how the definition of a religion is. I mean, in my definition, a religion is you trust something which you did not, uh, uh, how do you say, how do you say, wait, uh, yeah, you trust something you, you cannot verify. So there is like, and it, religion can be like everything. Religion can be science, 
So nowadays the religion is not like Jesus anymore or something like that. It's like the science and you have to trust the science. And this is like the religion or religion can also be like there is like one guy and he's saying like do this and this and this and just believe. And if you do this and this, then you go to heaven. And if you do bad things, then you go to hell. And it's like believing into something. And Bitcoin is not believing into something. Bitcoin is like don't trust verify. It's like you can verify like how are the rules? How is the the inflation going on? How is the money? Uh, yeah, how is the money inflating? How is how is everything going? How is it's a completely transparent system? You can even check the the source code. You can check everything, and in a religion, to some point you can check things, but at some point you have to start believing. Mm. And in Bitcoin, you can come to the place where you don't have to believe anymore. You can come to a place where you can realize. And this is also like the, the next thing. So if you're like into uh, awareness or into spirit, spirituality, I mean, you can believe in a God, you can believe in, you can believe in, a, in lions or you can believe in cats or in animals or you can believe in everything. You can believe in science or whatever. But at some point, if you make like inner work, you can come to a place where it's not like believing that I believe we are all not separate and we are all one. It's not about believing, it's about realizing. You can come to a place where you realize, hey, it's really not a separation. There is no separation. We are all one piece. We are all together, one yeah, humanity family or whatever you want to call it. And the same goes for Bitcoin. At some point, you don't have to trust or you don't have to believe anymore. You can just realize. And this is like the big, big change. And also, like I'm not really so much a fan of religion because I mean it's a good tool to like uh, to like govern like whole groups of people because I mean that's all almost or not always what we did with religion but a, a lot a big part was like how can we govern like a lot of people we just give them like some things and we just spread them to the people oh, you have to do this and this and then that is good and if you do this and this then that's, this is bad and so you can govern a lot of people and then you you make them, yeah. You, you you make them get, yeah, uh, frightened because they think, okay, if I do the bad things, then I will go to hell, and if I do the good things, then I will go mm. to to heaven. And you just, it's like in media, it's happening right now. If if you do the bad things, then you will, uh, bad things will happen to you, and if you do good things, good things will happen to you. And that's like how, yeah, people are governed. It's like a, about fear, and it's about, yeah giving them like, like, like morality and then saying, okay, okay, that's not moral and that's good, that's bad. And, but actually there is, in my opinion, there is no need for this. Is, is that uh, sometimes I think like, is that in human nature? And will like, because when you see the media is like always like this really bad things are really blown up. Uh, and then when you look at the facts, okay, yeah, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, and, and I mean, it happens also on YouTube. It, it's not just mainstream. It, like things, are, uh, you make things worse or better uh, to make some excitement around it. Uh, and, 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 and I think that's just in, in, in human nature. But is there some, some intention behind that, you think, that uh, there's like this, this divide and conquer kind of a thing? Whereas like, do you, do, you, do you see that in any way, shape or form? To be honest, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that human beings are like evil by default. I think human beings are just neutral and then the, there are like different layers, like just like first layer, second layer, third layer. The first layer, in my opinion, is always like we are divine beings. We are just poor love. We are just poor peace. But at some point, our ego gets involved and then we think like we are separated and then we, then we think like we have to steal from other people. So our lives get better. But this is like nonsense. But really, the core is like not evil, but lots of people are like really drifted away from their source and they're they are not connected with their inner peace anymore mm. so that's like where the chaos comes in and then we have like other egos and then the egos killing each other and this is just the surface of the universe so if you just go all the way back then there is no killing or there is no war or something like that there is always peace and yeah so i'm not so sure if like the politicians if they are super evil i mean some of them probably are but lots of them are always, yeah, they're incentivized by wrong incentives. 
So we have like a really bad incentive structure because nowadays politicians, they can just print money and your children, my children or whatever children, they have to pay like for the debt they're making now. So it's just like the incentives are so bad that politicians are all, all, almost incentivized to do bad decisions because also they don't have to, uh, I, I don't know the English word, they don't have to uh, haften. Uh, they don't have to. Um, wow, uh, I also don't know. No. They don't. They don't have. There. There is no judgment for the decisions. So if there's you, no consequences. Yeah, to, there, there's to no like, consequences. Yeah. Exactly. There's. There's no consequences. I mean, you can print money, and then in two years you're not on power anymore, yeah. and the society has to live with the consequences. But you don't have to live with the consequences. Or you're a big bank, you can do whatever you want and then you get a bailout and you don't have to live with the consequences. If you're a small business, you have to live with the consequences. If you're in Widowell, you have to live with the consequences. But if you're too big to fail, you don't have to live with the consequences. And this mm. is like not a good incentive. This is a really, really bad incentive structure. And this also makes people evil. I mean, they are not evil by default, but the incentives make them evil. And that's like the, 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 actually, that's probably the whole magic. It's, uh, it's a fascinating topic when, when we go, get in, in, in this whole thing. Uh, but to come closer to the end now, I have uh, always two things in the end. I have one thing that is kind of in the new end routine and then the, the question from the previous guest. Uh, the first question for me is, and I always do that because I want to learn, I want to give a platform where we can learn from other Bitcoiners, not about Bitcoin. That's why I'm always asking, what are you currently deeply passionate about, uh, deeply learning about, which has nothing to do with Bitcoin? Or it's not Bitcoin because everything has a little bit to do with Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's super interesting for me is always like awareness. So lots of people think like, okay, this type of uh, being like in a hustle and working and yeah, surviving, this is life. But there is so much more to life. There mm. is, I mean, your awareness can just open up and this is like just super inspiring to yeah, just go within and realize, okay, what is actually reality about? So is it like just about surviving? Is it just about like paying bills? Is it just about Bitcoin? Is it just about money? Is it just about getting rich? Or is there more to it? And also like health is a big thing and this is connected. If you're not healthy, then also your consciousness will not open up. And the next thing is also like longevity. If you're not living like a healthy lifestyle, then you're not living long. You're not living a good life quality and probably also your awareness will be bad. So everything is interconnected. If you're living healthier, you're making better decisions, you have a better life, you have a better lifestyle, you have better habits, uh, you will live longer, you live better, and you probably have a more open awareness and things are just yeah, better for you. And this is like the biggest rabbit hole in the world, not money, but like to ask yourself, so who is the person experiencing experiencing everything everything who's the person talking here with you who's the person thinking who's the person experiencing who's the person feeling and if you don't have answers to this basically your whole you're missing the point of life because if you work the whole life but you don't realize who is working if you talk the whole life but you're not re realizing who is talking mm. if you're thinking the whole life but you're not realizing who is thinking then I mean, probably it's not missing the point completely, but at least if you come to the conclusion, okay, now I, I probably at, am at a point where I, re I realize, hey, I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my emotions, I'm not my job, I'm not my money, I'm not the Bitcoin. I mean, then life gets just pretty awesome because then you're not attached to your Bitcoin anymore. You're not attached to your living experience here anymore. You're not attached to your body anymore. And if you're not too attached to your body, to your emotions, to your feelings, then you're also not suffering anymore. Because suffering comes when people attach to things which are by their ni nature impermanent. Because everything is impermanent. Here, the chair is impermanent. Your body is impermanent. The house is impermanent. Everything will die at some point. Even Bitcoin. Michael Saylor says Bitcoin is forever. This is not true. Bitcoin has an end at some point, at least if the sun implodes or something like that. At some point, there is an end. Everything is impermanent. Also, your human experience is impermanent, but if you cling to things, if you attach to things which are by their nature 
impermanent, then suffering is guaranteed. And why suffer if you can be free? <laughs> That's why I love that question so much. It brings uh, so many new topics on. Um, I have for the end routine, unfortunately, I think I was overwhelmed with the Michael Sale interview mm -hmm. because I always ask my guests mm -hmm. for like the next question, but I forgot to ask Michael Saylor that, that question. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot also Matej Zak, uh, the, the treasure CEO, to ask the question that you would have gotten now. So I want actually for today, like just as a, uh, to turn this a little bit around, uh, do it while we're recording. Do you already have uh, a question or like, do you have a question that you would like to ask the next guest? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can quickly discuss that and, and wrap the podcast mm -hmm. up. Yeah, so the question would be, do you think it's possible to, I mean, okay, we are, I mean, it's a, it's a question out of my position. I'm now 32 years old. Mm. And for me, the question, the interesting question is because people say, okay, you can live like 80 years, 100 years, but I think, you're also always like uh, yeah you're always like creating your own life and if you think like okay 80 years is like a lifespan 100 years is a lifespan i think you're limiting yourself so the question would be is it possible to live until you're until the last bitcoin is mine this is 2130 <laughs> and and this is like lots of people think i'm crazy when i th say like i can live till i'm till the year 200 to 2140 but in my opinion this is not crazy it's just about yeah opening your mindset and also like lots of things will develop i mean uh, longevity there are so much things happening and everything and also like it's about creating a life with good habits and i think it's not it's not a stu stupid idea to live till the year 2140 and even if you're just born today I mean, 2140, this would be like 120 years living horizon. And in my opinion, this is not something crazy. This is probably something achievable. So the question would be, is it possible to live till the last Bitcoin is mined? Uh, <laughs> that's, I think actually, yes. Like, I think uh, probably as a human nature, we probably figure out uh, at maybe at some point to extend the life further and further because like people when the life expectancy was uh, 30 yeah. people was like ah never someone <laughs> lives till 100 but people actually now live till 100 uh, and it gets more and more normal and uh, i think we just expand i don't know if we can expand till uh, infinity at some point uh, or can like i don't know upload our brain in in some virtual reality and it's like uh, that's a whole another topic <laughs> of discussion uh, but i I think we, 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 we could make it, this would make me uh, 142 years old mm -hmm. uh, at, at that point, <laughs> that, that would make me uh, definitely an old man. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I'm even 25 years old because a lot of people uh, never get to that point if, if you think about that kind of stuff. I never actually like had the thought of my, in my head of I want to live as long as I can. Like I never have this. Uh, I mean, this also thing. like don't get confused. It's not about living as long as you can because yeah. if you're living a fucked up life and you're like living 200 years in a fucked up life, yeah. I mean, there's no point about living. I mean, it's always about improving the quality of your life. And if you're improving the quality of your life, the side effect will be you're living longer. If you're healthier, yeah. you're living longer. If you're having like better habits, you have a better life right now, but the side effect will be you're living longer. If you have better relationships, you're having a better life right now, but the side effect will be you're living longer. Yeah, and if you, Bitcoin, if you have Bitcoin, you have a better life right now, but the side effect will be you're living longer. Yeah. Because society also, I mean, we never thought about what happens to society if we're like on a good hard money standard if we have like sound money i mean even just having like bitcoin sound money i mean this could probably just extend like our life expectancy 10 years 20 years whatever i mean if you don't have wars anymore if you're not killing each other anymore if we're more united i mean life expectancy goes up <laughs> <laughs> Life will be expanded to infinity. That's the title. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. I'm not uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, because I mean, everything is impermanent. There is yeah, no, nothing, exactly. nothing infinite. Uh, um, I mean, there is some. Inf 
some infinity points. I mean, stupidity mm. is probably infinite. And <laughs> also, like some people would say, the, in, the universe is infinite mm. and money printing is infinite, <laughs> at least right now. But at some point, probably it, it will end. Hopefully. Yeah, but that's things also we don't know. And also I say, OK, I don't know everything. And but I, don't, I know that I don't know everything. And therefore, I know stupidity is infinite. Uh, that's a, an amazing uh, point to end the podcast. Before I let you go, uh, where can people find you? Mm. Where can people find your podcast? Where can people find... Uh, uh, and where actually can people also ask you questions like, and mm. reach out to you? Yes, so you can check out our Bitcoin yeah, YouTube channel, Bitcoin Hotel in YouTube, but it's a German channel, so maybe you have to translate something <laughs> or you just yeah, skip it if Best you can't, can't understand it. But probably in one or two years, AI will be like so far that probably mm. it's like auto translated or something like that. I'm pretty sure. So therefore, I'm also probably not switching on English content because I think at some point AI will just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can check out in uh, X, you can check out Bitcoin Hotel. There you will find everything. And also, if you want to visit a bit, uh, hotel on a Bitcoin standard with like we have lots of Bitcoin conferences there. We have like lots of Bitcoin things happening over there. Satoshi Bar. Every room has like a Bitcoin Bible, a Bitcoin standard. We have like Bitcoin Cappuccino. We have like so many things. We have like a uh, lightning, lightning gadgets and lots of crazy things happening. We have like workshops. We make Bitcoin education. We have like a Bitcoin store we have like our little Bitcoin princess hodler and lots of fun things to do so you can visit us in Stutt near Stuttgart in Blochingen in Germany mm. and yeah just come and yeah enjoy I can totally recommend yeah. that it's a, yeah. it's an amazing experience so it, it was really fun and, and mm -hmm. uh, cool with you to recommend uh, uh, to, to record I hope uh, you, you can still <laughs> see us <laughs> let's see how the video is uh, and yeah as always uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye yeah. bye bye <laughs>